You do have to do work inside your business, but a CEO has to also do work outside of the business. You have to move the business forward. So therefore prioritizing ways to move the business forward is a marketing strategy. You have to be creative, you have to plant seeds, and you have to do things now in order to reap what you want in the future. If not, you'll always be on this hamster wheel of creating content, creating content, creating content, and it's dying, 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 dying because you're putting it on the wrong platform. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am back here. I'm actually recording this on YouTube. I wanted to answer some questions. I had asked one of my clients when it came down to her business to see if she had any questions and she did. I'm going to answer some questions about marketing in today's episode. It's also going to be streamed. If you're watching here on YouTube, it's going to be streamed on my podcast. I would love for you to be a part of my podcast fam. And if you are listening to this on my podcast, welcome. I have my jug of water (laughs) and as you all know it is tradition to take a sip so we have some great questions to ask and I'm going to answer them in a way that's helpful and based on my own experience along with other things that I have learned when it comes to marketing and I wanted to share with you so let's be Okay, so I wanted to share my screen and just kind of share the questions. Again, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you'll I'll still read the question out loud just in case. But I wanted to begin, want to make sure we're on the right page. Yes, we are. All right. So the first question is, if I have been active on Instagram, would you recommend putting reels on YouTube for more an evergreen marketing method? And... The very short answer to this question is absolutely. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. Evergreen, in my opinion, and it will always be in my opinion, that it is worth the investment. Now, let's talk about some things when it comes to putting your Instagram reels on YouTube. When it comes to any of the platforms that you make short form content on, you want to make sure it's not known that it was used on other platforms the only other social media platform that doesn't want you to create videos outside of its platform is probably instagram right now as of now i don't know if they have like technology that dictates whether or not you edit it in the app or not but supposedly that is true the update on youtube youtube shorts are now running ads so therefore you can get paid you do have to have a a thousand subscribers and in order to get paid on YouTube shorts you either have to have 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube or 10 million views on your YouTube um, shorts now it may sound like a lot but here's a true story so if you watch my live on YouTube about how to be magnetic on with your marketing I was interrupted at the end of the session (laughs) by one of the maintenance guys who came in to fix our AC. Okay, I won't go into it. I will link the episode for you. Uh, It's titled, Why Is My Life Falling Apart? on my podcast. It is not available on YouTube. It's only on my podcast. So they come in, they fix it. And I actually got to talk to one of the maintenance guys. I would known him for a while now. And he was telling me he put his some of his content on YouTube. And it soared like He's getting in front of thousands of people. And in fact, I had spoke to him a month before. He was like at 30 subscribers and now he's at 800. Mind you, he has no long form content on YouTube and he only has been uploading YouTube like the the long way, not the long way, the 9 by 16, which is the vertical way. He uploaded it and he just continues to upload it and it's skyrocketing. And I told him, I was like, that's amazing. I told him about SEO and how he might want to consider like really understanding like he has now community. So he's starting to gain traction very quickly. So I say all this is because the question that was asked by a great client of mine (laughs) this person makes really great content on her instagram and she is we're working on bringing her to youtube so it makes sense why she thinks should i even put that on my youtube if you have the content on your instagram from your instagram into your phone or you have it somewhere on your computer i would say put it 
on YouTube Shorts. I wouldn't even wait to be coached, to be honest. I would just put it on there and see what does because one thing about YouTube is that it will continue to grow and grow and grow. That is why it's called evergreen. Evergreen content works for you. So when we prioritize putting content on evergreen platforms like YouTube, podcasts, or Google versus what I like to call slavery platforms... <laughs> like Instagram, Facebook, sometimes TikTok. TikTok has a good SEO and so does LinkedIn, but if you don't catch on the wave of their SEO techniques or strategies, you won't get seen. And plus, you have to do a lot on TikTok. When it comes down to Instagram, if you're putting Instagram Reels out, I would prioritize YouTube Shorts. It is just an easier way to build momentum in your business, especially if you can handle a global community. That is big. That's pretty much important when it comes to creating content. And if you're focusing on Instagram, I think the number one priority should be YouTube at this point in time, especially in her particular business. Start creating content there. Start posting it there. Optimize and make sure the titles and descriptions are optimized in a way of what are people searching and put it out there. So if you're one of those entrepreneurs who are only really dedicating their time to Instagram reels as their priority of your social media, I say bring that Instagram down, <laughs> right? No hate or shade on Instagram, but YouTube should be a priority. If you're going to make the content anyways, put it on a platform that will work for you versus you work for it. I'm just trying to save you time. All right, so I had to switch my camera, so I just saw the screen in front of me. <laughs> Hopefully that answers the question on whether or not you should prioritize YouTube Shorts as you're making Instagram Reels. I think if you're a service-based entrepreneur, it's a good practice to start incorporating that immediately. Start a YouTube channel, get it out there, push it out there. I know most of you don't know how to optimize. Just get it out there <laughs> and follow along, especially on my YouTube channel when I'm going live right now. I have videos that I'm going to be sharing with you all about ways to optimize your content and really be um, helpful when it comes to marketing your business. So hope that was helpful. All right, so let's go into the next question. So the next question that she asked was, do you think organic marketing can bring in more quality champagne clients or your top tier clients as opposed to paid marketing? Now, in my honest opinion, I think you need both. You need both types of marketing eventually as a long-term plan when it comes to marketing your service-based business. It's just based on where you are financially. Now, I made a whole episode, it is episode seven, called Paid Versus Free Content, Which One Should You Focus On? Only on my podcast, so I will link that as well down below in either the show notes of this podcast or the description on YouTube so that way you can actually listen to it and hear my honest opinion I don't want to repeat myself just as a respect for people who do listen and watch my YouTube and podcast so in a nutshell you need both that's exactly what I said at the end of the podcast I will give you just a synopsis of what I feel like specifically for my service-based entrepreneurs so if you are in a service-based business most of the time a lot of my service-based entrepreneurs will do one or the other they will prioritize paid traffic and sales and they'll get in front of a lot of people very quickly mind you that code traffic the whole point of getting in front of those people is one to sell them a service and two to let people know in your local area or just area or your audience that you have a business to sell. Also with paid advertising, it is a short form fix. However, it does bring the business expense really up and it can be very, very high depending on the platform that you're utilizing to run paid advertising. Most people do Instagram or Facebook. That's usually the common thing. Organic traffic when it comes down to marketing is really to nurture your audience and to bring in people who are interested in learning more about what you have to offer. This also brings in the cold traffic, which is the top of the sales funnel, both paid and organic. So top of the sales funnel is like when you have a triangle, 
and it's coming down right a funnel just think of like a pyramid upside down the top of the funnel is way bigger and this is where a lot of the people get to just become aware that you have a business this is where paid advertising fits in this is where creating content and people don't aren't subscribed this is where your people are you have to know where your people are if you want more money i've talked about the law of compensation plenty of times but the law of compensation says the more people you impact, the more likely you will be compensated. It's a universal law that we have here in our world. And so that kind of brings us back to like the question, should you run both organic or paid traffic for specifically top tier clients? The people who come into my world have top tier clients. And the one thing I will share is just that, like I said, you need both. If you're at a point where you're spending a couple of hundred dollars or even a couple of thousand dollars throughout each month in paid advertising, but your sales and revenue is not going up, I would say you have to prioritize organic reach. If you only prioritize paid advertising, now is the opportune time to focus on organic content. I will say this, when it comes to paid versus organic paid is a quick fix if you need cash flowing in paid advertising does the job for you i will say this and i said it on the podcast no one who monitors your paid advertising can guarantee sales so it's up to you to make the content that actually sells which you can work on organically so that's why i think you should prioritize both depending on where you are if you have money to spare and putting it in paid advertising is a great way to get in front of a lot of people. But I think the goal of paid advertising should just be seen and not conversion. Conversion is when you are nurturing the clients with your organic content. You're giving them a reason why to follow you. You're giving them a reason why to question. You're giving them a reason to trust you as the person to solve their problem. That's where the sales begin. So you do need both. However, organic is like planting the seeds throughout time and over the months weeks years eventually the momentum will continue to grow just like a tree you plant a seed you water it you pour water on it you let it grow and you don't mess with it that's just how organic is and then all of a sudden it'll start to sprout and then start to grow on its own with the natural elements of the earth the same holds true about your organic content specifically on evergreen content instagram tiktok All these other social media platforms that came out first, they don't do it the way YouTube does. They don't do it the way podcasts do. And I still prioritize YouTube. Like I'm even creating a podcast and I'm still putting it on YouTube. Why? Because YouTube constantly grows. It may be short at first, but it constantly grows. And your champagne client or your top tier clients are all out there on multiple platforms. So we just have to know where is your tribe on and then capitalizing specifically on the evergreen content side and then bringing them into your world to go through your funnel. I hope that helps. All right, so the next question that she had, which was really good, and it kind of goes along the lines of the same thing we've been talking about is Google Ads. Are they worth it? Now, I have my own opinion about Google Ads, and it's not really a good opinion. (laughs) I don't think anyone can promise you to get on Google's first page. So the whole point of a Google ad is to get you on Google's first page because research has shown people go through the first page, maybe the second, but that's it. Once you go into the second page, people are not likely to go through so many pages on Google. And we know they have hundreds and thousands from just the same keyword because eventually the keyword that you're searching is no longer the match for the content that's being shared. Is Google ads worth it? In my opinion, I never done them and I probably will never do them. I don't think they're worth it. And People who promise you a return of investment, like your ROI of getting on the first page, like there's a lot that goes into that. And unless you're working for Google (laughs) and you're a third party contractor or you never worked for Google or maybe they've had success in other industries, there's just a lot that goes into it. It's just like trusting someone to watch your sales funnel. At the end of the day, you're the CEO. And if you're not making content and you're not producing content in a way that makes people want to subscribe, makes people want to like and follow, there's no point in running an ad. You're just throwing spaghetti at the wall. That's just my honest opinion. Now, the person, one of my clients, she asked this. She, 
she makes really great content, right? But I still wouldn't even tell her to do Google ads because I don't think you should prioritize that, especially if you're just trying to expand from the social medias that you're used to, which is like Instagram or Facebook. So instead, I think Google ads are a great place for like people who love to write blogs on their websites. That might be pushing it to be honest, like I'm, I'm being very real. And before I give my opinion, there was another client that I worked with. She hired someone to run her Google page and they promised that they would get her on, you know, the first Google page and she lived in New York City. If you go on and you type in wedding planners in New York City, you don't see any isolated websites outside of people who give the rankings of the top wedding planners in New York because that's how big New York is and the amount of wedding planners are. So she was gonna hire this person to help her with her Google SEO for her website, but no matter what they do, they cannot get, she can't get ranked. If you wanna be ranked on Google's first page, I'm gonna show you some examples that I've done. Now, again, if you're listening into the podcast, I'll kind of describe what I'm showing or sharing, but it's better to focus on your Google business profile. Why not focus there? I did. I tried so hard to look for a screenshot before I dismissed my balloon page, but for my balloon page, I was the number one or number top three for Orlando balloons when I was running my Instagram when I was running my Instagram and Google business profile so my Google business profile was was number three or top three in the top three it kind of went between the second and third place but if you're watching this on YouTube these are the analytics for my email when I wasn't even posting it was just gaining traction in August of 2022 it says add zero calls zero messages I wasn't pushing it at all but I had nine website visits and then 400 and 18 profile views because I was on the first page of Google with my balloon business, okay? And then for for out of the searches, it says there was 46, which is a 91% increase from the last month, and it was a 13% increase for the profile views. And then even on the bottom of the screenshot, it says top search items, and that's how it was found. It was balloons near me, balloons Orlando, and then balloon third digital. And then when every time I searched, Orlando balloons, guess what happened? My balloon page was on there and it wasn't my website. I didn't hire anybody. I didn't run any Google ads. I just put up my Google business profile, work in the brain that I have when it comes to YouTube, (laughs) constantly think about what are people searching. And then I put it together on my Google business profile and that got seen more. And I was getting more inquiries with that as a service-based entrepreneur at the time than ever before. I even had to like, I was like, oh my God, now don't get me wrong. I was throwing spaghetti at the wall, but every single time I create content, I don't create it just from a mindless brain. Not to say it's shade to anybody who's not making that, but I created content in a way of what are people searching constantly it's the way my brain works now I don't just create content and then look up the titles or whatever no I want to know what are people searching what are people liking what are people watching what are people viewing and then I'm going to give the same thing when it comes to my content this is why I never prioritize Google Ads I didn't need to so if we look at the next picture if you look closely it says YouTube right there on the Google search and if we let's bring this back so it said things I had to learn with balloon business now if you go on Google and you search up these words as of 2023 in March 31st you'll see that the first my first YouTube short is on the Google's first page Three things that changed my life and boosted for inquiries. Four, that is my YouTube short. I didn't know that was there. I was just like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And that's just recent. Then the next thing that happened over time, especially on Google, because Google owns YouTube and we all know this. And if you don't, now you know. (laughs) Over time, I've had multiple success on there. So another picture that I found when it came to the screenshot, it's the same keywords, things I had to unlearn with the balloon business. I circled them in red for you if you're watching this on YouTube. There's my YouTube short right there on the on the Google business profile first page. And then there's an old video I did it back in 2021 that's still ranking on the first page of how to start a balloon business. Let me tell you, I was the how to start balloon business queen. <laughs> Okay, and then also another screenshot, all of it's in incognito because I wanted to make sure I was giving valid information because sometimes it's skewed with 
what you're searching already, but it's incognito, so I'm not even logged on, no history, no cash, no cookies, whatever. And then again, my diaper cake is on there on the first page again. And I made this, I don't even know when I made this. I forget all the time. I wanna say it's like 2018, 2019, I did the diaper cake and it's still there. Okay, and again, here's another compared to the all the, eventually it will probably lose momentum because I don't continue to create content about a diaper cake. Um, and these are just my analytics when it comes to YouTube. Prioritizing YouTube has been the best decision I made in my entire life when it came to my business. And when I was doing my event business, I prioritized making content on YouTube. I also put it on Instagram to nurture the people who were willing to follow me. But YouTube was something that it was an amazing thing that kept happening over and over again. And the more your content is about the same thing, eventually you will get you will gain momentum, especially if you hire someone like me. <laughs> so to answer her question when it comes down to, again, just to reiterate, should you be doing Google ads? Let me put out the question just one more time. The answer is, in my opinion, no. All right, so let's go on to the next question because we have a few more and I wanted to continue moving forward and giving you value. All right, so the next question she asks, well, how about Pinterest? Is this something I should prioritize in my business? Now, I don't, I, you know, I honestly forget to talk about Pinterest because I have success there and I don't have screenshots and I probably do, but I have to go through my entire Google photos and find it. So it, I didn't have any photos just yet. But the one thing I will say when I turn my Pinterest into a business account, I believe you get analytics through your pins. And I started to put my TikTok videos on Pinterest. I think they were running um, something called idea pins or something like that. And you can pin those. I got in front of 12,000 viewers every single month on average between it fluctuated between six to 12,000 people. So should we prioritize Pinterest? Someone should. <laughs> <laughs> so in my opinion, I think these are, Pinterest is a great place for bloggers. And when I mean bloggers, I mean people who write on Google. You know, when my client was just like, I know I'm not a product-based business and that's what usually Pinterest is there for. I don't see that, actually. I don't see the product base. I see the blog, um, like the coaching and this online services. So, and if you're a writer, this is a great place for you to be. In fact, I would probably prioritize that if you're not going to do video as your evergreen content and you love to write, start a website and put your blogs on there because it will gain traction. Now, if you're a person like me who wants to do video content and you love it, you can actually dibble and dabble between both platforms. So here's what you can do. And this is what I'm testing out. But you can create a podcast and I'm here on video recording it as well. So I'm going to put it on YouTube as well along with podcasts that are all the other streaming apps. The next thing you can do is you can take your YouTube video, transcribe your whole video, put that as your blog on your website, and now you're hitting Google's search engine. Can I get an amen for that? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to test out. Is it a lot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but who am I? I am a person who my sole business is to create content. It's to help people create content. So therefore, I'm prioritizing this. For service-based entrepreneurs, it might be a lot. It might be a lot to like sit here and do all these things, upload it everywhere. And I would never recommend that to anybody because you have a business that you have to focus on and that is the bloodline of your sales right now. So choosing just one platform to do it. However, I'm your guinea pig. And anybody who wants to join me, I have some, I have a YouTube client too that she loves to create content and she's been creating content before I coached her. So we just capitalize on her as a content creator too. So I can tell her, hey, if you're going to do a podcast, you can put it on YouTube, transcribe it and put it on your blog and your website. So now you're hitting all three evergreen content platforms to be able to be found in search because Google is the number one search engine in the world and YouTube is the second Num second number two search engine in the world and it's owned by google so if we can hit those two platforms at once and then podcast is a really great has a great seo where it kind of runs on its own and pinterest has its own really powerful oiled machine so i would definitely like i said if you just want to focus on one evergreen platform i would focus on google start writing blogs and then 
putting those pins on Pinterest and then pinning them and then making sure the pins are what people are searching on all types of platform. Now, when it came to Pinterest, it has a very high SEO, which means you will be searched, you will be found. I never saw the revenue of that. If you're a person who likes to write and maybe you have made short form content, you could even put that on Pinterest too. But like I said, is it time consuming? Yes, this is the biggest con of the world. (laughs) Short form content does really well on Pinterest, but like I said, you got to create the content in order to put it on there. But if you're not a person who likes to sit here and dance and and not say you got to dance or make educational content, you you are a really good writer. Good writers should be doing blog posts on the websites and email marketing. I think everybody should do email marketing, but that's a whole nother ball game. And we'll get there one of these days. I hope that helps. All right. So we have one more question that I wanted to go over. And one of them is the challenge I had asked my client what is the challenge of creating content and then I also asked her what is stopping her from developing a global audience and these are the two challenges that she had and I wanted to talk about more solutions in case this is you so one of her challenges is that that I'm going to read verbatim what she wrote she said time is my biggest issue after that is money right? One of the first hires will be more likely a social media manager. I need someone who has the knowledge on the different platforms to market in an effective way to draw out those top tier clients. And then what's stopping her from building a global audience is that time keeps coming up. I know that I need to make some time, but for some reason, maybe because this is not my zone of genius, I don't show up as much as I should to be able to grow my community online. So let's talk about the first one. Like time is obviously, and the reason why I put both of these together is because she kept talking about time. Time is an interesting concept. I won't go into what Albert Einstein says, which is time is all relative. However, we all get the same 24 hours. That's the one thing that's consistent throughout the entire world. No one gets less time or more time. No one has more time or less time. No matter the status of who you are, how much money you make, how many clients you have, what kind of business, what industry, where you are in the world, it does not matter. We all have the same amount of time. So a solution, obviously we're going to work together and we're going to continue to help her organize her time. But if this is someone like you when it comes to prioritizing content and marketing, I will say this. She had two issues. One was time and then the money to outsource. I will say that they walk hand in hand. Like they are married and they're just like like double knotted, right? Sales and revenue with marketing, they just mesh. They're together. They love each other. They can't do anything without each other. Marketing is the bloodline to sales. Without marketing, it's harder to sell. Now, I will say this. The number one marketing strategy is word of mouth. And there are people on this earth who never have to create content ever, and they will make millions of dollars. I've seen them, I've interviewed them, and I've asked them questions because it goes against everything I'm trying to teach you. Because how does someone not make content and then they're able to build a business and make money? Well, that's why word of mouth is the most powerful because you don't need content marketing. But For the people who do like to create content, who believe that is the reason why people buy your services, then this advice is not for you. We will talk about word of mouth marketing in the future. And if you would like that, feel free on the podcast to give me a five star review and let me know or DM me on Instagram. Or you can give this video a big thumbs up on YouTube and let me know, is that something you want for me to go dive deep in? If that is the number one marketing, I have yet to make content about that. So if that's what you want, again, let me know. So that way I can deliver content that's meaningful to you. So how do you find the time? How do we get into her challenges of finding time? So a bit, a good strategy that you sh- anybody can use is time blocking and prioritizing your time. So there was a moment in time where in my business, I was telling my husband, I was like, oh my God, I don't ever have time to do this. I don't have to do that. He was just like, why don't you track your time? Track your time honestly and and track it every like 15 or 30 minutes so i tracked it every 30 minutes what i was doing from the time i woke up to the time i went to bed what was i doing in in those in that time frame and a lot of it was loose time that i had no idea that was being thrown out there time spent on social media time spent 
answering emails all the time time doing di two different things and not accomplishing them so they end up on the to-do list again you have to track your time track your time for a week even on the weekends if you're doing work on the weekends or whatever you're doing hopefully you're not you're not overachiever like me but if you're doing work track that time how much time are you pouring into the things that matter you do have to do work inside your business, but a CEO has to also do work outside of the business. You have to move the business forward. So therefore prioritizing ways to move the business forward is a marketing strategy. You have to be creative, you have to plant seeds, and you have to do things now in order to reap what you want in the future. If not, you'll always be on this hamster wheel of creating content, creating content, creating content, and it's dying, 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 dying because you're putting it on the wrong platform. And so then your money doesn't grow because you're like trying to figure out like, how the heck do I get more money? Oh my God, I have to make more content. No, if you're not going out into the communities, if you're not having people talk about your business through word of mouth, creating content is the easiest and fastest way, but why not put it on a platform where it constantly grows like YouTube? See, YouTube is a long form content goal, but I am on the other side of making a decision two, three years ago and it working in my favor today. And I have more time than I ever had before. Who wouldn't want that? Because there's different types of wealth. Wealth is about amount of money that you have in your bank, but you have no time. Another form of wealth is that you don't have no time and you don't have no money, right? There really is no wealth, to be honest. But then true wealth is having so much time and so much money. And most CEOs don't see that a lot of the times. I chose a business where I just took a nap right before recording this and I don't have to rush and the money still comes. In fact, I haven't made an Instagram post in forever. I was thinking, I was like, okay, maybe I should start creating short form content, but I didn't prioritize YouTube. So I wasn't gonna make content for no other platform, but my TikTok keeps growing. My Instagram keeps growing because of YouTube. People keep finding me on YouTube and podcasts. I prioritize the platforms that are going to work for me. I want my money to work for me and I want my time back. So I'm willing to sacrifice the time I have now when maybe you don't have a lot, but for the time that I do get back when the content constantly works for me. And that's what I'm doing for her. We're going to be working together on putting her content on YouTube because it needs to be seen because she has great content. However, she's throwing spaghetti at the wall. Now she's making money, but I she wants to build a global community. She wants to help more people. That's what happens a lot when you climb up the scale of revenue in your business. And so I help people like her get on the platforms like YouTube and get seen, get heard, and then create momentum where you don't have to trade a lot of your time. You have to be disciplined on your time but once you discipline on your time and you push forward in that time frame, it will benefit you in the near future. This also answers the question of money to hire. How do you outsource it? Well, it goes right back to the same thing. You have to prioritize your marketing. Marketing creates bigger funnels, gets you in front of more people, and gives you more revenue coming down the pipeline. I will say this, a funnel all right, we talked about this and I talk about this in my program. A funnel is the triangle upside down. But a lot of people forget that they don't, especially my service-based entrepreneurs, they don't create businesses that captivate clients after they book their services. What are you doing with your clients after they book you? Now, this client has reoccurring revenue because she's constantly having to do month to month services for our clients. So she's always constantly with her clients, even after the first payment. But a lot of people who are in the service based industry have a client and then that's it. But it shouldn't be that we need something that circulates reoccurring revenue all the time. So to answer her question. Having more money, we are going to cultivate a global audience, first probably utilizing her YouTube shorts because she's already making short form content, to then putting long form content on YouTube in an optimized way in order to not only get in front of a lot of people, but hopefully in the future start another revenue stream so that way she's able to get back her time and hire more people to help her with her business. All right, I appreciate you spending time on questions about marketing. I do have another set of questions that I will answer in the near future, but if you're watching this on YouTube, write those questions down below this video because I really wanna answer and 
your questions might be featured on a future video or podcast. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for being in the space where we can come together as entrepreneurs to discuss coffee. Well, for me, it was my big jug of water. (laughs) Coffee over content. I love you so, so very much. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.